Here's the Canon XF400. In this video, I'm gonna talk about all the things that I like about this camera so far, and towards the end of the video, I'm gonna compare some test footage with the XF400 and the Canon EOS R with the 24 to 105 RF lens. And then I'm also gonna compare the XF400 to my Panasonic UX180 which is a beast compared to the size of the XF400. But it's not a beast when compared to the video quality, which you'll see if you wanna um, stick around towards the end or just skip towards the end and you can see the test footage. I was very surprised when I got the XF400 how, how good it is in comparison to the Canon GX10, which I had rented uh, when it first came out a year and a half ago or maybe two years ago and I was testing the GX10, and with the, these Canon camcorders, the, they have a model with the handle and the model without the handle, and other than the handle, they're identical, or they should be identical on the inside, the guts. But upon using the GX10, I was not impressed, and the summary of that previous review was that um, I didn't like the camera for the price it was selling for. The XF400, since then, has come down in price, so I purchased this one. The 400, uh, the 405 is exactly the same with the addition of a SD, a HD SDI out, but it, that also that adds like a four or five hundred dollars to it. Which if you don't need a HD SDI out, it, it's not not necessary. But um, compared to the GX10, this is a different camera. The XF400 and the GX10 are not the same inside, and I got. Um, on my iPad here, I got a lit the specs, so I'm gonna go through the specs that I really like about this camera and, and get it uh, right uh, to what Canon says it is and not just my uh, my memory. But the, the major thing, besides the handle, the biggest difference between the GX10 and the XF400, the video quality is just overall a lot better. It's a lot better to me in low light, it's a lot better in daylight, the uh, everything about the, the the video quality is better than a GX10, and I, I don't understand why. One one major difference on the inside is that the codecs are, are are different. There's different codecs. There's a base codec, an MP4 codec, 150 megabits, that to, I think is the same. But then uh, the XF400 had a firmware update. The firmware update added XF AVC 4K to the XF400, but not for the GX10. Isn't that interesting? So it's the XF AVC codec, and it's 160 megabits, and you have an HD version that's 45 megabits. Previously, the regular MP4 codec, which this still shoots, the uh, HD codec was 35 megabits, and the UK, uh, the 4K UHD was 150 megabits. But the XF AVC is a more robust codec than the MP4, even though it's a 4208 bit. They're both 420. You can get 4228 bit out of the HDMI if you're using an external recorder. I think it's only 8 bit though, not 10 bit. But the added internal XF AVC is a really good codec. And that shooting that codec is not a night and day difference, but the, the video quality is much improved over the GX10. So if you're looking at a, uh, a GX10 as a, as a cheaper version of the XF400, it is cheaper and it looks that way too. So you're not gonna get uh, your best bang for buck with the GX10. Get the XF400 and you're gonna get really great uh, HD and 4K UHD quality. One of the other things that I like about this camera are the microphone, the microphone connections here, the audio. So this has four channels of audio. You have two XLR and then two uh, internal stereo. And there's also a mic jack here that's also internal. I mean, it, it takes place of the internal. So you can record four tracks at the same time. And here on their website, they explain the mic configurations you can do. Also, the autofocus is phenomenal. This is uses the dual pixel autofocus. It's 
really good. I would say it's the best autofocus you can buy, uh, you can find in a camcorder, and this one has it. Never have to worry about autofocus with the XF400. Very accurate. The, this SD card play, uh, placement here, when I was uh, operating the GX10, I found this to be an odd place to put the SD cards, but now that I have a handle and I've been using the XF400, it's a really good place for it because when I'm swapping cards, I don't have to move anything. I don't even have to open up the LCD to, to, to remove the cards anymore. Sometimes I have this closed and it's just so convenient or easier to just uh, pop this open and it comes off from the top. So I was surprised that how much more I liked it on the XF400 than I did the GX10. The zoom range, it's um, not as much as the, the previous Vixia cameras and not as much as the XF200, which I have right here. And I'll, I'll do a body comparison to the XF400 in a second. The, it's a 15 times optical zoom. And that goes from a 25.5 to a 300 something millimeter, uh, 35 millimeter equivalent. Uh, and that's okay but it does stop down. So it starts at a 2.8 at, at the wide angle, the, the 25.5 millimeter. And then as you zoom, it, it stops down immediately to about a 4.5, I believe, at the uh, full telephoto lens. So you compromise, um, even though it's not a 20 times zoom, you, you still get a big compromise with, with the iris. But uh, in the test footage, as I'll show at the end of this video, the low light performance is pretty good on this camera. Yeah, I, I'm surprised how, how good the, the low light was on this camera when I was testing it. And the touchscreen interface, it's great. Uh, the uh, manual focus is great. I like the button placements. The, the ND filters are awesome. This is what the ND filter wheel looks like. And as you cl uh, click the buttons, it rotates from these different ND strengths. So with the GX10, uh, the battery life to me wasn't that great. But the battery life on the XF400, I don't know if it was because of the firmware update that I can get a longer battery life. Uh, I think I got two hour, two hours and 15, 10 minutes around there on a single battery. And these are the same batteries from the, uh, the Vixia camcorder line. And they use the exact same charger. So this is a charger I bought years ago when I had the, the, the Vixia uh, 20. Uh, I forgot the letter number b before it. And I got all these other extra batteries. These are the Canon brand. Has to be Canon brand. I tried the third party and the third party batteries do not work except for this one here. What is this? This is the um, Capahen. So Capahen, this third party battery does work, but I had the Watson that, that didn't work and then I had another uh, off name brand that didn't work with the camera. But so stick with the, the Canon brand for batteries, for compatibility. Uh, I just looked out with this one. I don't even know if they sell this one anymore. And who knows if it's gonna stay, if it's gonna work at, with future firmware up, uh, updates. But the charger works. The XF400 does not come with a battery charger. You gotta charge it with the monstrous AC wall connection. So this is the battery charger that, that works with all of the other Vixia cameras with, with these their batteries. And compare this to charging the XF400 via this giant power brick, power brick AC wall adapter, which, which is the same one for the GX10. And it was massive for that one, and I think it's a little big for the XF400. Way too big. Compare that to, this is, this is what the battery, all you need to charge the battery. So uh, why, is, why this is so big is beyond me. But that's fine. I have all these batteries now and they could last all day. I have four of them last all day. Now I'm gonna compare the body design of the XF400 to the XF200. When I was reviewing the uh, GX10, I, I, I thought that the can, I thought that Canon downgraded the body, qual uh, the body functionality and compared to the XF200, which I still believe is the best uh, cam a prosumer camcorder form factor 
that I've ever used. Out of, out of all the cameras I've ever used, this is the best for handheld camera work. And I don't think Canon's gonna go back to this design. They're, they've now used this design, and with all the latest uh, other Vixia cameras that are, are being released, it, they're taking this, this design, not, not that um, much better design. But here, my, my big issue with it is that it seems unnecessarily big for what this does. And when you hold it handheld, it's front heavy. It doesn't balance in the hand very well. It's not comfortable. You have to really adjust things to, to get it comfortable in the hand when you're going handheld. Whereas the XF200 had a very, to me, perfect design because of the three rings that you can control the uh, aperture, the uh, zoom and the focus and the rotatable grip that I wonder if the rotatable grips just broke and that's why it just wasn't a long term. It didn't last long term, but I've had this for a few years now and I have no issues with it. But you can rotate it as far as there and then rotate it back to its 90 degree. So when I'm going handheld with this, I put it this way, have the flip out screen there and I can rock and roll for a very long time with that placement. And if my hand gets fatigued or my wrist, I just adjust to um, get, relax the placement of where my hand was. And just by changing the rotation of, of where my wrist was, if I'm shooting all day, it'll, it'll give it a bit of a relaxing, it'll relax it better. And I can still shoot. Whereas the XF400, I haven't done a full all day shoot with it yet, handheld, but when I do, my hand's gonna start to ache. So the size isn't that much bigger. The rotatable grip adds some length to it, uh, or girth, but they're still really like the same size. You have a quarter 20 thread, and you don't have a quarter 20 thread there. Another thing I, I was disappointed with with the XF400 is that I invested in this wide angle adapter this Canon wide angle adapter that adapted to the Vixia cameras and the XF200. It adds a 0.8 times uh, wider uh, focal range, uh, field of view. And that made it about a 22, or I forgot the, uh, what, what it made, the math was there. So this screws on perfectly with the XF200 uh, and all the Vixia cameras because they all have a 58 millimeter thread mount. The XF400 has a 58 millimeter thread mount, except the thread is more recessed in, inside here. So when I, when I try to screw on the old wide angle adapter, it won't screw on. It, it, I need a thread extender in order to fit this on. Canon makes uh, its own wide angle and telephoto lens specifically for the XF400 the wide angle and telephoto adapters. So you just have to spend another, well, I don't know, this was like 400 something dollars if you want that wider uh, field of view. The one advantage that I see with the UX180 has over the XF400, besides the body design, when you need a, a big body to shoot all day or to even put on your shoulder, you can't beat the uh, UX180 over a camera like the, XF400, but what I'm what I really miss on this is the time code in out and the HD SDI out that comes on a lower price range or similar price range to the XF400. So to have the time code and the HD SDI out at a price point that's equal to the 400 and um, not for the 405. 405 is, you know, like I said, 400 to 500 dollars more. This is a better value, but the quality, as you'll see from my test that I'm going to do in a minute, uh, I mean, judge for yourself. But in my spoiler opinion, the XF400 beats the UX180. So now on to the test footage where I'm going to compare the XF400 to the UX180, and I'm also going to compare the XF400 to the Canon EOS R. Here's a test of the XF400 versus the Panasonic UX180. I'm shooting on a Canon EOS R with 24 to 105 millimeter 
RF lens. This is a C log you're, uh, you're seeing now. This camera I'm shooting at the YDR, which starts at uh, 9 dBs of gain natively. And this camera, the Panasonic UX180, I'm shooting at the, uh, what is this, 100 megabits uh, Cine D setting. This, the Cine D setting is supposed to be the best uh, neutral setting for the Panasonic UX180. I am now recording at the camera's highest codec in 30p. For this UX180, it is the, it is 100 megabits per second. MOV, and for the XF400, it's the it's the XF AVC codec, 160 megabits wide DR. So now I'm shooting both cameras at its uh, their widest angle, field of view, focal range. The UX180 shoots to a 24 millimeter wide angle. The XF400 is a 25.5. I do not have any of the ND filters engaged, so you'll see some blowouts in the bright spots towards my shed in the background, but they're on autofocus. These cameras are both on their native daylight uh, white balance. And I set it to f4.8. f4.8 is the maximum aperture uh, that you can open up to when you fully zoom each lens. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to zoom both lens one at a time, uh, both cameras one at a time, to their max zoom. And there should be no stepping of the iris because I have them set at 4.8. But you be the judge of which one, if you do see some stepping of the aperture as I zoom in. I'm going to zoom in the XF400 first. It's on autofocus. Oh, that was pretty fast. All right, there you go. I, I'm trying not to, oh, I, I kind of did move the camera a little bit so you, there might be some jitter, but I have the image stabilization turned on on both cameras. Let's go max zoom for the UX180. Here we go. There we go. That is the max zoom of the UX180. Notice the native colors. To me, the XF400 is, is more saturated, it's more vivid, but that's just judging from the LCD screen. And the LCD screen of the XF400 is way better than the LCD screen of the UX180. The UX180 has one of the worst LCD screens of any camera that I've ever used. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom both of them back. I'm gonna start with the XF400, zooming back out. And now the Panasonic, zooming back out. All right, that was a daylight test of the XF400 versus the UX180. Now I'm inside and the, this is not the darkest, it's not pitch black in here in this room, but it's fairly dark. There's some afternoon, evening light peeking through the shades there. So I have the XF400 and the Canon EOS R. I'm shooting on a Panasonic UX180 and I have the gain all the way up, uh, 24 dBs of gain. I don't know what the ISO equivalent of that is, but it's pretty muddy what I'm shooting at. So the settings here, I'm gonna go through the gain settings on the XF400 and then on the EOS R, I'm gonna go through the ISO settings and I'll rack them up as I film. This, These are similar settings to what I was shooting outside with the XF400 is at a 4.8, which is at the max, uh, the widest you can open the aperture when it's fully zoomed in. So I thought I'd leave it at 4.8. And then I'll also go open to 2.8 just to show you the difference. And with the 24 to 105, that's F4, so that's stuck at F4. 
So right now you're looking at the base DB gain when you're shooting wide DR. I also have to turn the autofocus off. Once you're in really low light, most autofocus systems on camcorders just don't work. So now I'm gonna start with the XF 400. This is at a base gain of nine dBs. And I'm gonna go up 12 dBs, 14, 16 dBs, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25, 27, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, okay, 38, 39, okay, 39, 39 dBs of gain is the highest the XF400 will go to, so I'm going to leave that at 39. Now I'm going to adjust the ISO of the Canon USR. I'm shooting C log, so it makes it even more muddier. So I'm at 200. Now I'm at 400. Now I'm at 640. 1000. 1250. 1600. 2000. 2500. 3200. 10,000 ISO, and the focus needs to be adjusted. Now I'm going to 12,800, 12, and 12,800 is as high as the Canon US R goes. Now let's see what happens when I open up the iris a little bit more, or all the way on the XF400, and see if that makes a difference when compared to the Canon. So now I'm going to Open up the iris, it's at it's at 2.8 now. So the XF200, XF400 is at 2.0, F2.0, 39 dBs of gain. And the Canon is at F4, which is the uh, widest open that the 24 to 105 can go. And it's at 12,800.